Nell and Penn ready for battle. Let's meet the starting lineups beginning with the big round. We've got Alex Harris leading the way. Here's the team that joins him. It's going to be a 4-4-2 four, four, flat, so you're looking for structure and you're looking for balance. Miller and Samways, what does that relationship look like? Miller might push a little bit higher to join the attack. Harris, you want him to spearhead the attack. And Latona will drop in a little bit deeper. Look for them to fill in the gap. First 10 to is a balding hairline, and he attributes that to the risk this group takes. Now it slipped through for Curran, but the offside flag comes up. And in the starting 11 for Cornell. Started every game so far this season, still with it now. And to assist this season in his 12 starts. Samway is looking for a third assist on the year. Good corner. It's headed over the bar by Sam Latona. Off into a dangerous spot. No room through the traffic for Philip Falcon to get to it. Flawless in for Liam May. May looking over the top for Harris. It's knotted down. Here's Harris on the volley. It's blocked. Latona did a good job of heading it over there. Is there a penalty here? We've got a stoppage and a point to the spot. Wasn't sure which way the referee was going to go with both players going up for it. And I think Penn thought it was going to be the other way as well. But a penalty here for Cornell. It starts with the really clever movement at the last second from the player in the midseason rankings by top drawer soccer. A chance for a dozen, and he has it. Cornell leads 1-0 at home on a day where potentially the Ivy League regular season title could be decided. The Big Red with a big start. The great start for this Cornell side who have been perfect at home. As you take a look at this foul, notice how Pratt gets here first. In my opinion, it's not a foul. I'm not a referee. And who's going to step up and make the play in big time moments? Harris cools you with like enough pace. Lowenhardt gives you a chance. Falcon cannot get down to his right hand side quick enough. Venom, 12th goal in the season. Wrap things up the opening weekend of November. Coming off his line here is. That's it from Doe. Sakalaski cutting in, weaving through. Have to be careful here. And the yellow. Here's Doe. Doe getting in line. And it ends up in the arms of Fried. And as far as Doe, a lot of space here for Doe. Floats it centrally, and it's a tough one for Friedberg. He had a player crashing, but he deals with it in the end. You pull it a little bit more away from Friedberg to give your players a chance to run onto it. The senior goal and assist on the season. Now another look here for Cornell. It's a dart right at the keeper, Philip Falcon, knuckling on the way in, but he makes the stop. Fantastic strike here from Sam Waves. Nice pocket of space, about 20 to 25. Floated to the back post. Nobody there was curling away. Falcon couldn't do anything with it. Lucky that nobody was back there as Hovan put a dangerous ball in. Slotted through for Hovan. Nice give and go on the turn. A chance brewing here. Contact in the area. Cleanly won, though, by these areas of the field that Cornell's starting to find. Elash Fair looking for Cobb. Last minute individual marker here. Joaquin Nahinki stands over it. Nahinki drops it in. Good ball flicked on and in. Pen right before half. Talked about the importance of set pieces, especially when you're not creating through the run of play. Fantastic ball in from Mahinki. The placement is right where you want it, right on top of that six yard box because Friedberg cannot come off of his line. But give credit to Connor Dawson. He just wants it more. Goal side of the individual marker does not need to hit it hard, just simply redirect it and guide it into that far post. PNU. With Ricky Lopez Espin, I'm Joe Malfa. Number 12, Penn, number 16, Cornell. Away we go. Where you see a team whose 12 goal scorer is the long throw and take, or you want him poaching, but he's got that cannon, slings it in, bouncing around on the volley off the post. Goes across the goal mouth. Nobody home to tap it in for the big red. First big chance of the second half goes to the home side, but nothing to show for it. Hey! 
Over the top, in behind for Wagoner. Friedberg off his line. Push to the end line. And corner one by Penn. Jack Wagoner. Harris cutting, lays it off. Dodging at the edge of the area here was Koble, but he ends up skying it. Today's featured end. third right now, Cornell. May. Centered for Koble to the end line. Koble, can he center it? Back to the edge of the area, floated toward Kopp. Pressuring, and it might be an own goal. Awkward deflection in front, and Cornell takes the lead. Ben Doe looking around, wondering what happened. Cornell mobs Ka, who put the pressure on, and the big red are back in front. Well deserved from the home side. The start this second half, they've been far and beyond the better team. On the ball, dictating tempo, getting numbers in their attacking third, and the quality and the willingness yet again from Ka. Connor Miller's on the ball, good things happen. That's your second midfielder there, Cobalt. But look at the movement before the ball arrives from Call. Slashes across. Doe actually gets there first and heads it into Call. If he doesn't make that run, this goal never happens. Unorthodox, yes. Cornell will take it. As they get, again, a one-goal lead to start this second half. Great spot, Ricky. Not an own goal. A flick header away that hits the shoulder of Ka. Finding a conference title and finding some silverware for the cabinet. Top of mind, Ka on the flick header. It deflected through. He's threatening again, Alion Kopp. They're trying to find him more. Every time it's been played his way, he has produced a moment of danger. It's been a half chance for Paul every single time he's been on the ball, and he's made the most of it. Really clever from Sam Of course, they got to keep it a one-goal game. Harris here with Diakos. Harris goes for goal. No trouble for Falcon. Diakos into space. Still Diakos looking through for Harris. Harrison alone, Harris stumbles over the ball. A dozen goals on the season, the man you want in the space you want him in, but he trips at the last moment. And it completely came undone. I know that he was testing out a mummy costume for Halloween in a couple of weeks. <laughs> you have your Halloween costume set? Still a secret, still a you secret. You asked me that last time we were on the air together, it's a secret, it's gonna be unveiled on Halloween. Secrets don't make friends, Joe. <laughs> Oh, he's got a lot of work to do here. <laughs> there is a trainer over on the bench who right now is just like, oh, here we go again. I gotta, I gotta figure this one out. Either that or Gaffney's gonna say. Final third. Jeremiah from the corner. And the four man wall, this is a three man wall. And it is Kaeli again chipping it toward the back post. He's surprised there, Ricky, for Curran. Curran stepped on the ball, Korsanowski picks it up. Still Korsanowski eyeing goal. Korsanowski goes for goal. But it's an easy dribbler for Freeberg. Not the third time that Korsanowski just takes that extra touch. And what that does, that allows Cornell to get into best long throws on the other end. Both these teams are going to treat those throws almost like corners, essentially. Sakalowski chips it in. Korsanowski, quiet all day, springs to life. His 10th goal of the season, we're level again. Talked about the importance of Korzanowski. You find him, you find success. And as a number nine, how do you play off the blind side of your individual marker? Give credit to the numbers. Getting forward for Penn. But the lack of rotation, Aiden Martin's getting caught a little bit deeper than his back line, so Korzanowski is onside between him, the center back, and the outside back. Simply guides it past Friedberg. Service from Miller. Still loose, Diakos waiting. Diakos volley, it's blocked from Pratt. Did a good job of keeping the hands down. Seemed like it was going wide anyway. Taking no chances now, it's Aiden Martin. Blocked again. A missile from Pratt, edge of the six, flicked on. Still loose in front, pumped home! 
It is Curran off the bench in this second half. Penn lead for the first time today. All three Penn's goals have come from whipping the ball into a dangerous area and just wanting it a little bit more than the opposition. Not the initial challenge, not the secondary ball, but it's the third action that this ball does end up in the back of the net. Every single player in a Cornell jersey gets caught ball watching. Too pedestrian-like. Brandon Curran, opportunistic, ambitious, gets the reward and gives Penn a 3-2 lead. And it would be a full six points behind. First place Penn with only three games to go. Long throw from Harris, loose at the near post. That's why this game was so pivotal. With Penn having that three-point lead in the standings on Cornell. A win for Cornell would have Really difficult to not have the energy be infectious. Under a minute remaining, launched forward, flicked on toward Cog, gathered by Falcon. In no hurry to get it back into play. Forward, Johnson does, toward Harris and Cog, and a foul called against Cog. That will see this one to the finish line. Penn comes on the road, they come from behind twice, and they knock off number 16, Cornell. See what it means to this Penn side. The grit, the personality, the fight to go down not once but twice to find a way and a massive three points in the back pocket for Brian Gill, exactly what they need. And then they stay at the top of the Ivy League standings. Cornell in fourth, they'd still be in the Ivy League tournament. Penn controls destiny now.